everybody. Um, I'm Amanda Hutchinson and I'm the, the head of policy for regulatory change at, at CQC. And um, I'd like to welcome you all to the, the session the that session we're running today, today on, on making, a, making a better connection better between, between registration, registration and, and ongoing, ongoing assessment. assessment. So I've got a bit of an echo at the moment. Okay, I'll press on um, with with this. So yeah, I say well, welcome to everybody to to this with to this session, which is which is a a session for um, providers and professionals who work in health and social care and organisations who who represent them. Um, and it's it's part of a, a series of sessions that we've been having uh, about our updated regulatory model and the changes that we're proposing to introduce to to how how we regulate and I say that the particular focus for today is 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 on registration um, if I could just first of all do a bit of housekeeping um, so uh, I think just the the kind of ground rules for the session are if you want to ask a question or make a comment please use the raise hand function or you can use the chat box on the side of the screen. Um, when the presentation is happening, please make sure you're on mute. Um, if something comes to mind during the breakout room discussions that's outside the questions being asked today, you may wish to use the chat function in your breakout room as a parking area uh, to make sure uh, that there's a note of issues arising which, which fall out of the discussion areas for the day for the day um, we're going to do our very best to stick to time and the main room sessions will be recorded today and um, whilst we work together today just a reminder um, to be uh, non-judgmental respectful um, supportive make sure that everyone in the room has has a voice um, and also to listen to what others are saying um, so to move on to to how we're going to run the day so the agenda for the session um welcome an overview of the session 10 o'clock um and then we're going to move on to a presentation in the main room where uh natasha Passad will talk through some of the thinking and, and proposals that we are um, working through at the moment around how we better connect between registration and ongoing assessment. There'll be five minutes for questions of, of clarity. So if there is anything that you particularly just wanted to clarify from the presentation or think it's important that we do that. Um, we'll then move into breakout room discussions and uh, Steph uh, will can work the magic which will pull everybody into a breakout room with a CQC facilitator and the, that the facilitator's job will be to make sure that everybody has an opportunity to talk this through, that we um, run through all of the questions and issues that we wanted to, to work through with you and then also that we have kind of three main points coming out of the session which will be pulled together into a, into a collated document. Um, we'll then have 10-15 minutes back in the main room at 10 past 11 for some feedback so we'll pull out some of the main points that have come through in, in those discussions and, and reflect that back to the group um, and then aim to um, wrap things up and, and have absolutely finished by by 10.30 because um, we know that everybody's time is precious and, and we're really uh, grateful to everyone for for um for giving us the time that you you have today um if we could move on to the next slide then please um so the, the 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 kind of aims of today's event are to focus on on the question of of how we make a, a better connection between our registration and ongoing assessment processes um and to hear your views on on this ambition um to um, look at what we can do to improve the alignment between registration and assessment and also to look at some of the potential barriers and issues for us in, in meeting that ambition. And I think um, Natasha will, will I say, work through some of the detail of this, but just a, a kind of bit of a reminder of, of, of the context for this. Um, we are 
working through our new regulatory approach in, in the context of our strategy. Um, an important part of that is, is moving on to a single assessment framework, which is the framework that we will use to make our kind of regulatory judgments across not only providers, but also um, the new work that we're going to be doing around local authorities and integrated care systems. And it's also important that we're using that framework as much as we can at the point of registration. So, so that the, the kind of there is that consistency of, of the methods that we're using across everything that we do. Um, again, for just a, a reminder, the, the single assessment framework, we are we've reviewed our current key lines of inquiry uh, um, prompts and are proposing to move to a set of, of, of what we're calling quality statements, which will we'll set out um, in very clear terms um, our expectations around, around the quality of, 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 of care. And those will be framed as, as, as we statements, but we'll also be linking to um, set of, of I statements which express um, what good care looks like from the, from the perspective of people using services. Underneath those quality statements, we'll have a set of evidence categories, which will be make, make it very clear what's the evidence that we're looking for when we're making our judgments against those quality statements. Um, and there's a lot in there that's about improving the consistency of, of, of what we do and improving the transparency of, of what we do. So it's very clear to everyone what we're looking for and what people need to do in order to deliver good care. And then also as part of that, looking at how we can apply scoring within that methodology, again, in the interests of, um, of um, bringing for forward better consistency, but, but also being able to kind of really get that sense of where people are sitting within their rating of, of, at, at a key question level. Clearly, one of the things that we can also do is is to think about how how we bring that methodology forward into our registration work as well. So thinking about at the point of registration, how we use those quality statements, how we use those evidence categories, how we can potentially use some of that scoring as well, so that um, the judgments that we're making at the point of registration are then easily translatable into the next stage of the process, which is a rating for, for, for a service. So this is very much what this work is, is focused on. It's about streamlining things. It's, it's part of that piece of work that we've been doing around improving registration and improving the experience of, of registration as well. So. On the back of that, there's a bit of context. I'm going to hand over to Natasha now to, to kind of run through um, what I've said in a little bit more detail. Um, we'll then move into a breakout room discussion. Thanks, Amanda. <laughs> you pretty much said it all. But yeah, so I'll try to kind of um, give a bit more kind of meat on the bones for, um, for what Amanda's been saying. So um, thank you everyone. I'm Natasha Persad. I'm a policy manager in the policy and strategy unit um, at um, CQC and I have been working with lots of colleagues um, within the organisation um, looking at um, registration and connecting um, our registration processes with our ongoing assessment process as part of the new regulatory model. Um, could I have the next slide please? So, so what is it that we're trying to address? As Amanda um, um, spoke to, um, essentially what we want to do is we want to better align our registration and ongoing assessment processes so that our ratings um, for those services that we rate um, and our regulatory decisions for those that we don't um, are more aligned. So currently um, we, we do only register services who we judge to be able to be um, providing sustainable, um, good quality care, but we know that we could do a lot more um, to connect our processes at registration and ongoing assessment um, and ratings. So, and this covers the elements that Amanda has, has mentioned. So this looks at how we can um, um, be more consistent in our assessment framework, um, how we make our judgments on the information that we collect 
how we feed this information um, and use our judgments across registration and ongoing assessment and how we build on them um, and how we are better at using a common um, sort of language and currency across the two processes so there's more alignment. Um, next slide please. So um, the key points that we'll be touching on in this session um, in terms of driving better alignment um, between registration and ongoing assessment are, as I mentioned, around the assessment framework and applying our single assessment um, framework. Um, whilst we will continue to issue the decisions that we need to um, legally at the point of registration, our decision to register will essentially be um, it will be in effect a provisional rating of good. Um, we have always worked um, towards a quality bar of good in registration, but applying the quality bar um, of good will be made easier through um, our processes and how we're using and sharing information. And um, it will be easier to apply, that quality bar of good will be easier to apply um, by um, by doing the above um, and also doing the above coupled with the improvements to how providers um, will interact with us digitally will result in a more streamlined experience. So there'll be benefits for, for, for you as providers um, in terms of your experience of the registration process um, and also um, benefits for CQC internally in terms of how we work. Um, next slide please. So um, Amanda already spoke about the single assessment framework, um, but this is really, really crucial um, and fundamental to aligning um, our registration and ongoing assessment activities. So we'll be applying a single assessment framework um, and a common criteria for evidence. So um, our assessment framework will be built on the five key questions and well-known rating systems. And this is what we use to set out our view of quality and make judgments. Um, and this is based on work that we've done with previously with um, Think Local and Act Personal, so TLAP, National Voices and the Coalition for Collaborative Care on making it real. Um, and they've co-produced a personalised care and support um, framework that can be used by people who work in adult social care, health, housing and people use services. So um, essentially it sets out what good um, looks like, um, an outstanding person-centred care looks like and what people should expect from providers, commissioners and system leaders. So we'll be using I statements as a starting point uh, um, as our for our assessments uh, framework um, and taking the, the important first step towards re truly regulating through the eyes of the public. Um, and we've already confirmed that our ratings and five key questions will stay central to our approach. Um, we're introducing a set of quality statements which is pitched at the level of good and linked to the regulations that will help us to make our judgments about the quality of care. Um, and that will place our key lines of inquiry, as Amanda said. Um, and they're really seeking to remove the duplication. So the existing duplication again um, across Chloe's um, is really being stripped out by um, our application of the, the quality statements. So we'll use these set of quality statements in our assessments of all sectors and service types and at all levels. Um, and crucially, we'll be using them to register services with um, a provisional rating of good through to our work looking at local authorities and integrated systems. So it will be the basis of all of our assessment activity. Um, we want to be more consistent and transparent in our approach um, we'll make, and how we make judgments on quality. So to do this, um, we are developing uh, a way to categorise and score evidence as part of our assessments. So there'll be six um, evidence categories to bring more structure to our processes for assessing quality. And they are people's experience, feedback from staff and leaders, observations of care, feedback from partners, processes and outcomes of care. Um, and to enable us to, to be clear with providers and the public about how we use the information we have about care in a service or local area, we'll set out the evidence, what, that will be required for each service type and at each level, including at registration. So it'll be really explicit about the um, the evidence that we'll be collecting for the quality statements um, at, at the point of registration and also um, an ongoing assessment. Um, and our single assessment framework will act as a golden thread from initially registering a service at the level of good through to ongoing assessments of quality. And as I said, this is really, really fundamental um, and drives how we carry out our assessment, um, our assessment activities at registration through to ongoing assessment. 
Um, next slide, please. So this is an example policy statement, um, and this is an example of how it would look um, at, at registration. And this is for a domiciliary care agency. So um, the evidence requirements will vary um, slightly according to the type of service that we are that we are assessing. So, um, so this is the um, quality statement on infection prevention and control, and it sets out the evidence categories at, the, at registration, what evidence we would be um, requiring um, for this quality statement. And so it would be processes um, and feedback from staff and leaders would be the two evidence categories that we'd require. Um, we draw evidence from the provider application form would be looking at the infection control policy, and then we'd also um, um, gather information from the interview with the provider. And we would um, then score this evidence. And for each quality statement, we would have a score, which we would then, um, if the if the service was, was given a, quality, uh, a provisional um, rating of good across the, the um, all of the key questions, then um, this would then, these scores would then be transferred over to ongoing assessments, which would then be um, built on through the ongoing assessment process. Um, can we have the next slide, please? So, um, so this is for new providers, so not variation for existing providers, so for new provider applications. Um, as I said, um, registration decisions will in effect be a provisional rating of good. We'll apply the single assessment framework and specify the evidence requirements at registration. We'll apply um, the rating aggregation rules for a service, so we'd have consistent re uh, rate aggregation rules. Um, and if those, if under those rules, the service um, could not be rated as good, we wouldn't register um, that service. Um, and so we would also, to encourage, um, we'll use published guidance that requires providers from the point of registration to demonstrate that they are good by the full rating assessment. So we'll have made our provisional, um, we'll have registered services which have a provisional rating of good and we will require um, services through published guidance to demonstrate that they are, um, that they receive a, a scoring, um, a rating of good for their first full rating assessment. And therefore, in order to do this, um, we would seek to confirm the provisional rating of good that was um, judged at, at registration so we want to confirm that through ongoing assessment rating activity within a defined period of time, which we would, would be um, seeking to specify. And then on the first permanent rating assessment, if the service was not assessed as good or above, we draw on the evidence from registration um, in order, in addition to um, what we had um, gathered as part of ongoing assessment to take swift action. And so we'd be using enforcement action where care falls below, um, falls below the level of good um, in a key question. Um, and just to be clear, at the point of registration, um, we would be, it, it's a provisional rating of good. So we wouldn't be awarding um, an actual rating because the evidence requirements at the point of registration would not be um, the same as the evidence requirements that we would have for ongoing assessment because of the nature of the assessment. So, for example, we wouldn't have um, evidence from um, people who are using services um, so so we wouldn't be able to be it's not a actual rating it's a provisional rating um, can we have the next slide please so um, so to, to reiterate we want to be really using um, evidence in a consistent and seamless way across our functions of, of registration and ongoing assessment um, we want to be um, delivering a consistent approach and bar in terms of how we assess the evidence. We want to be um, really explicit about our expectations of care through our um, through our um, assessment single assessment framework. Um, for, for existing providers um, seeking to vary their registration, um, we will use our insight from ongoing assessment and our information from ongoing assessment to target likely weaknesses and prioritise these areas in the, um, the, the registration assessment for that variation. Um, we'll be collecting um, evidence on each key, um, on each quality statement and making a judgment on those at registration. And this will be the base layer of the information that will go forward um, for that provider for, for those services. 
and our required evidence will prioritise feedback from leaders over um, processes and policies um, and will seek to um, prioritise um, feedback from people on existing services for existing providers who are seeking to vary um, their um, registration. Service specific um, evidence requirements will require evidence from the provider that the model of care is in line with best practice um, for that particular service. And what we're really trying to do across um, across our whole regulatory model, across our functions, we're really looking to harmonise um, the units of assessments and our aggregation rules um, and our definitions of services across registration and assessment. So we're using the same currency in the same language so that we can transfer the information across. And it's really clear for you as as providers in terms of the what's the information that we're asking you for and what it relates to. Um, and next slide, please. So there are there should hopefully be lots of benefits to this um, um, this approach and, and transforming um, transform our regulatory model. So benefits for providers. So there's better process and technology will ensure smoother integration from initial um, registration through to ongoing assessment. Um, and so um, it should be a much kind of smoother experience. Providers should view this as their first, um, the registration assessment um, as their first performance assessment. Um, and we will re require evidence, so we should hope we should collect information only once where it's available um, and use this information across our different functions. Our regulatory platform, so the, the, the platform that we use um, to support um, and to drive our, our regulatory activity will capture evidence so it's easily accessible to inspectors and registration um, inspectors so that we can use it internally much better um, and from the outset we should um, have a, a better understanding of providers and the services that you're you're delivering they'll be delivering um, so there'll be benefits for uh, for you as providers and also for us internally uh, next slide please So um, in terms of the, the, the questions and the issues that we'd really like your feedback on, um, so from your experiences, it'd be really, really helpful to understand whether or not you agree with our ambition to better connect our registration and ongoing assessment processes so that our judgments are better realised. Um, it would also be really um, helpful to, to have your feedback on how we can strengthen alignment between registration, ongoing assessment and ratings. What are the that some of the what are the issues that you've experienced um that would be really um that it would be really good to be able to to tackle um and then what are the potential barriers and issues for us meeting our ambitions so those are the, the three questions that um, our facilitators will be um I'm asking you to um or gathering your feedback on um uh, next slide please i think we're going to um I think now we're just going to take a pause for some questions for clarification. Um, <coughs> any points of clarica clarification in terms of our ambitions and what we're trying to achieve and anything we might need to take into account? Yep, so, so anything that anybody just wanted to check before we move into the sessions? Um, Susan. Hi there, um, Susan Ajay from the DDU, so uh, dental sector. Uh, can you just clarify, so between the initial rating and the assessment, what's that timeline? When when do you when do you estimate you're getting to do the full assessment, having initially rated initially um, rated or registered a practice? So we're we're working we're working that through at the moment, and I, I suppose it it kind of might vary as well to in in terms of the type of organisation, but I th I think what the process would be is there'd be a register be the registration of a new service, it would get up and running, and then we would conduct the the kind of further full assessments to 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 confirm and um, in services which are rated, which obviously the dental sector isn't at the, at the moment. No, um, 
so so clearly you know we we need to adjust this in terms of services that are rated um and and, and not rated but i think that basic principle of um you know the the the, the registration process lines up with the ongoing assessment i think is is kind of what we're talking through here across all yeah. services but but historically you haven't you haven't visited all dental practices so I'm just wondering how you're going to get to them all after an initial yeah no well, I, I yeah I think that's so, a, a what, kind what's of question, the, what's the question, time question, to, question to log for for the further development work that we need yeah. to do on this these are a set of proposals that is, we're is, testing is, out and looking for looking for feedback so if you've bought a practice and then it's rated as less than good what do you, are you what's going to happen then so we can talk this through and get the clarity in in the in the um in the breakout rooms um i've got yeah. a question also now from um Zinat. thank you um I, I think my question linked to what the um other provider just ask though which can be clarified i hope in the uh, breakout group because i'm also thinking of there are times when you take over um, a contract by the local authority and that service may not have been doing very well but you're taking on that contract i'm just wondering what would that assessment look like yeah so i think what it what it would be oh sorry natasha you wanted to come in sorry yeah so we're, we're, <laughs> there is and what we don't want to be doing we don't want to be um yeah, we don't want to be um there are certain circumstances when a provider will come in and they'll be um, potentially struggling in service and they'll be taking it on and we don't want to be to this to be a barrier for um for services being um, um taken on and improved so there'll be so a lot of what we've spoken about essentially is about a new provider so a new provider who's taking on new uh, or setting up a new service for existing providers that are looking to to vary their to their registration um there there potentially will be a slightly different process where there'll be um it might be that kind of you know there'll be a period of time where we'll be expecting um to see um improvement um in that service but there, there are some details that we would need to work through in terms of overall, this is the principle around actually when we're registering services, um, we would want to register um, providers that would be good. There are certain set of circumstances around um, existing struggling services that will be taken on that we need to work through. Um, and what would be the things that we need to take into account in order to make sure that we're not acting as a barrier for services to be taken on to be improved. Thank you. Um, got one more hand up from from Peter. Keelan. Sorry, just coming off mute. Yeah, just, just, it was a quick, uh, just a quick question. I think on one of the slides it says part of the register, and I, I think it's part of the registration process, but it's a bit vague. But it says, it says that for existing providers, you'll also prioritise feedback from people on existing services. I've assumed that means feedback from service users. Does it? Yes, it does. Okay, and 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 um, prioritize. What does I know it sounds like a stupid question, but what does prioritize mean in that context? Because um, we will have numerous examples of inspections. I'm sure others around the, in the room will as well of of uh, one or two comments being taken as absolutely red because it happened on the day of the inspection and. Uh, but that's what you found that's it and you don't you're not prepared to listen to anything else uh, whatever uh, so priority what does prioritize mean exactly in that context because it's so i think what we're trying to say is so it, it, in a more general in a more general way in terms of how we're using categories of evidence what we will try to do as opposed to processes and um and so it, um looking at uh, policies and processes will be generally more generally thinking about um and listening to what people um um, who experience services have been um, ha have told us um, in order to make sure that we're focusing on the things that um, that are important. So it, it, it's a more general way in terms of how we would use the evidence categories as opposed to the individual um, um, 
uh, uh, comments or statements that we might be um, that might be news. If that makes sense. And, and this is also yeah, thanks, in, yeah, and and thanks, Natasha. Uh, I think this is also in the context of um, obviously one of the big things in our strategy was was about how we bring people's experiences of care into the centre of what we're doing, and, and I think part of that is is that we will be kind of considerably enhancing the ways and the volume of, of um, information that we collect from from people using services to, to, to make sure that we have got that uh, kind of, I suppose, broader evidence base um, to address, I think, some of those concerns that we have there. And we, so, sorry, just one other thing, and we pulled it out for this because for, for, non, for new providers, we don't have that. We wouldn't be able to have that people, um, the voice of people who are using services, because we don't currently have that. But for existing providers, we would have that for other services. So we want to make sure that we're using it when we can um, at the point of registration. Sorry, Amanda. OK, great. So I think it's time to move into the breakout rooms now. Um, and so the, the the kind of purpose of these is is, is very much to, to kind of get, get your views. Um, the facilitators in the rooms won't won't have the answers to to all of your questions um and i think it's really important though that we we kind of log the sorts of issues that people have have raised so far so there is a a kind of specific question about kind of what do you think some of the barriers and and considerations uh, are around this so i think if if we could kind of get that good sense of 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 you know what are the things that we we haven't thought of what are the things that we'd need to take into account here um that would be really helpful so i think we're getting back together again at 10 past 11 um and there'll be an opportunity there for us to just reflect back on um feedback from those those groups so i think i'll hand over now to Steph. <music>